Hi everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing Unit 7 on Natural Selection by getting into Topic 7.11, which is on extinction. Our last video was on speciation, or the formation of new species, um, and thus the diversification of life, finding more variety and increasing what we call the biodiversity, the variety of living things and life processes. Um, as you might expect, extinction is exactly the opposite of speciation. This is when a species no longer exists or uh, it can no longer reproduce on its own, okay? And over the history of life and the history of Earth, extinction has played a really, 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 really big role in how life has changed, okay? It's gotten rid of 98% of the species that have ever existed on Earth. Think about that for a second. There's 8 million different species of organisms-ish, ish right now. We probably don't even know most of them. Um, and 98%, that's only 2% of all the species that exist today. That's only 2% of all the ex species that have ever existed on planet Earth, if you catch my drift here. That's crazy, okay? So most of all the species that have ever existed are now extinct, and they will never be coming back, okay? So it plays a really, really big role, and that's something that we're going to be talking about here. Extinction reduces biodiversity. The more species go extinct, the more, uh, or I should say, the less diverse ecosystems become, the less variety of species there are, and it becomes less biodiverse. And we're going to talk about the implications of that in our next video, 7.12, 7 okay? Uh, but that's what extinction is really about. Um, extinction rates are, tend to be very, very high during periods of ecological stress, meaning that when some globe-shattering, world-changing event occurs, species are more likely to go extinct. Um, and extinction, the rate of species extinction goes up really, really high. Um, and that's happened several times, actually, within the last 500 million years. In the last 500, or 542 million years, there have been five extinction events, and we're actually on our way to a sixth right now. Go human beings, love us. Um, but yeah, we have, we've had five different mass extinction events. And what those are, it's when a large number of species goes extinct worldwide due to disruptive changes in global environment. Um, and as I said, we're, we've had five already and we're on our way to six. So take a look at this graph right here. This is showing species extinction rate over the various eras um, over the last 542 million years, okay? So uh, I highlighted a few of them on this page. Here's the big five. Uh, we have one, I forget what this one is called. There's the end Ordovician, um, the end Permian, the Triassic, and the end Cretaceous um, mass extinction events. And this one is obviously the most famous because we know it's an asteroid that um, hit modern day uh, Yucatan Peninsula in, in Mexico and it wiped out all the dinosaurs, right? And it made way for mammals um, to dominate the planet and thus uh, led in one way or another to the evolution of homo, homo sapiens here and hominids. Um, but uh, this one is the most severe, the end Permian. Um, a little interesting fact about that, it was projected that about 98, 98% of uh, species went extinct during the Permian extinction. Look at that number, or look at that variety all the way down here. That's quite a drop. Um, that occurs right after the end Permian. Um, and from my understanding, the end Permian are also known as the Great Dying. Um, it was a result of supermassive volcanic er eruptions um, occurring that blotted out the sky and s filled, the, uh, filled the atmosphere with poisonous gas. It accelerated the greenhouse effect and made it really, really hot in parts of the environment. It upped the amount of carbon dioxide and made the oceans really acidic. And a bunch of fish died. It was, it was just rough. It was rough, okay? Life on Earth almost ended right there. Um, so if in one way or another, okay, everything that has existed since the end Permian is diverged from the survivors of that crazy mass extinction event, okay? And we can say the same thing for the Triassic and the Cretaceous extinctions as well, all right? Um, so that's what mass extinction is really about. And extinction, as I said before, it plays a huge role in how living things are shaped on our planet. And there is a major reason um, for diversity. You can't really have speciation without extinction, 
okay? You can't have diversification of life without some forms of life, you know, dying off. It's a huge deal. So as I put down here, the rises and falls of major groups of organisms have shaped the history of life. And here's an important point. Extinctions provide newly available niches that can be exploited by different species, okay? So if one species dies off, that means another species can occupy that or species niche or niche as it's called, meaning that it can eat their food, it can use their habitats, it can drink their water, it can, uh, it can occupy their space, okay? That's a huge deal. And that, uh, that promotes really the growth of biodiversity. It takes about, you know, five, 10 million years for life to bounce back after a mass extinction event. Um, but after that mass extinction event, you have a brand new different, you have a brand new version of life on Earth after every one of those mass extinction events. For example, check out this guy over here. This is called Morganucodon. And this was uh, one of the earliest um, mammals. Okay, so check it out. He's got a little fur. He's got fur, you know, and he's he's very closely related to reptiles. He's uh, he has, a, yeah, he's, he's very close closely related to reptiles because reptiles evolved into mammals eventually. Uh, but this is projected to be one of the common ancestors of all different mammals. And this fella right here would not have been diversified into all the different types of mammals that we see today, including ourselves. If it didn't, sur if that mass extinction in the, at the end of the Cretaceous didn't happen, if that asteroid didn't hit, think about li how life on Earth would be. It wouldn't be dominated by mammals, that's for sure. Okay, um, so mammals eventually took dinosaurs' place as playing a role in ecology. It, it occupied the dinosaurs' niches. Right, it started eating their food. It started, you know, taking their land, that kind of thing, because the dinosaurs are gone. That's a real thing, okay? Another thing that uh, occurs, bivalves, so like clams, oysters, um, all that kind of stuff, um, they, they existed a very, 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 very long time ago, okay? Um, but after a while, you know, after, I want to say, as a result of the Ordovician extinction, uh, there, are, there was a group of species, a group of species that were able to drill into the shells of bivalves and kill them, and they're really going to wipe out bivalves um, until this mass extinction event occurred and it wiped out the groups of species that could drill into the bivalves, but the bivalves survived. And they are still around to this day, so they've survived several mass extinction events. Um, so that's pretty interesting, I thought, how mass extinction can really shape how life is. Um, a couple more points I want to make before we end this video. Uh, and when 7.12, we're going to get into variations of populations. Okay, but extinctions have occurred at gradual rates throughout life history besides mass extinctions. Okay, so extinction is a part of life. Just like death is a part of life, extinction is a part of evolution um, and the, the history of life on Earth. It just happens all the time. Okay, it's a gradual thing and it's an okay thing. Okay, mass extinctions, maybe not especially the mass extinction that we are causing, as in we human beings are causing right now, that's probably not a good thing, but extinction is an okay thing. It's a natural thing. Um, ecosystem diversity can be determined by speciation and extinction rate. Okay, so something that we're going to talk about in the next video is ecosystem diversity. How many different varieties of life are there? What's their biodiversity? Um, that can be determined by the rate of speciation and the rate of extinction. If the rate of speciation, the formation of new species, is greater than the rate of species going extinct, that means biodiversity is increasing. Makes sense, right? If you got more being, more being born versus more dying, they're going to have a greater birth rate, right? Same thing. More species being formed, less species dying, greater biodiversity rate. Um, and if speciation is less than extinction, or the rate of speciation is less than the rate of extinction, biodiversity is decreasing. Okay, same thing. If more people are dying than people are being born, then there's a declining rate, right? Same idea. All right, that'll be it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.